coordinator Sushila Narang and Sarap Biji. I special welcome to the participation of various college of principal, professors, and teaching faculties. Welcome to all. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for a welcome address. Now I request uh, Professor Devanandan, uh, National General Secretary, PACE and Principal, KPM College of Teacher Education, Kerala, for thematic session, uh, who has been uh, uh, working towards connecting all intellectuals to strive towards success achievement. And he is a wonderful person. It is his effort that we are organizing this uh, webinar um, to solve all the problems related to multidisciplinary uh, course. I request Professor Devanandan, sir, uh, for the thematic se session on implication of guidelines, the pros and cons. Professor Devanandan. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, respected uh, President uh, of Principal Association of Colleges of Education, Dr. Shupal Singh, Vice President, our beloved Mega Vishram Galvan, madam, and John Secretary Gangadhar, sir. Dean of Education of Davankara University, Dr. Bhargatesh, sir, Panir Selvan, sir, and all other dignitaries and participants. I would like to request to you to stay with me. Even my presentation is a little bit lengthy. This is an effort from the side of the pace to provide an awareness to all of the colleges, principals of College of Education, as well as the teacher educators and the stakeholders regarding the new policy regulations formulated by the UGC in transforming the higher education institutions into multidisciplinarity, as well as interdisciplinarity. So these are uh, peculiar terminologies that are utilized by the UGC to explain the context uh, on the basis of the recommendations of National Education Policy 2020. So be before we are going to uh, the session, I would like to present uh, a PowerPoint presentation that will uh, give you some idea about uh, our uh, I think this is visible to you. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, actually, in India, it is happening a wonderful shift of the paradigm in the field of education. See, actually, it focus the rich culture of India. As we had discussions, a small discussion in the previous sessions that why NAP and why multidisciplinarity and what is uh, yeah, focusing on national education system? Because we had a very vast and the sound education system. Unfortunately, because of the intrusion of British education system, we forgot the greatness of our system of education, system of literature, system of science. Everything was rooted out at the reign of British government. So this entire system that we are going to implement in India, taking the more valuable aspects of our past and making more, I request the, I request the participants 
क्लियर मल्होत्रा प्लीज म्यूट योर सेल्फ मैम यू कैन बी को होस्ट सो वी कैन बी विजिलेंट ओके आई विल आई विल आई विल आई शेल मेक यू को होस्ट बट आई एम ऑन द स्क्रीन आई एम ऑन द स्क्रीन दैट्स अ प्रॉब्लम फाइन ओके सो uh so restoring the great culture means may, uh, taking the most valuable precious aspects of our culture and compiling with the modern aspects as well as a requirement we are restructuring or reformulating the entire system of education in india this is what i understood from the reading of all the literature that is related to neb as well as of ugc guidelines and from the discussions with various educationists in india so what are my objectives of today's session so my presentation will provide you an insight into the present status so we before we are jumping into the explanations on the nep and the ugc guidelines and the multidisciplinarity we must understand what is the present statistics of education in india and then we have to go to the outline of the nep directions on education as well as uh, directions on teacher education from the nep side then the present policy direction that we are discussing how it will uh help us to transform the beard colleges into multidisciplinarity as well as you will understand what are the challenges ahead while we are implementing this ugc guidelines and we will discuss at the end of the session what are the possible solutions to the issues that may arise from the implementation of this policy these are the objectives of this session let us go to the statistical analysis of schools in india say so there are around um, 7.74 lakhs of primary schools as well as 4.42 upper primary schools then 1.51 secondary schools then higher secondary schools 1.39 lakhs and total 15 lakhs just uh, marginally 900 and uh, 9136 schools are there in india so uh, here we can see the total number of schools year wise from the uh, 2014 to there is a, a gradual uh, change in the growth as well as in regression in 2018 the number of schools were increased then you may ask why the schools are shut down because of economical reasons so and there are so many other reasons that is this is not the time to discuss all these uh, uh, reasons for the closure of schools uh, in national wide in rural india there are 12.59 lakhs of schools while in urban area it is 2.50 lakhs of schools in india so majority of the schools are in rural area you know india has a, a very big land area of uh, from a rural side see while considering the school students uh, in the in india in 2020 uh it is so changes gradually to uh, 8 lakh 53000 uh, from 8 lakh 50000 to sorry 85 lakhs to uh, 85 lakhs at uh, 36000 that increased in 2021 as 85 lakh 97000 so uh, there is a, a gradual growth in uh, 2018 and uh, 19 in the primary schools as well as uh, in uh, upper primary schools also there were increase secondary schools also there were increase 
in the higher secondary schools are uh, it uh, shows a 53.8 percentage so this is the statistical analysis of schools then when we take uh, the statistics of the school teachers in 2022 at present as from the sources it shows the number of teachers in government school 49 lakhs in private schools it is 36 lakhs and in aided schools around 8 lakhs and in other area it becomes 3 lakhs so uh, in a level of education where number of teachers so you can just uh, read it from your uh, uh, screen see the changes in uh, primary sector 63 lakhs and the secondary 16 lakhs and the higher secondary it is 26 lakhs so this is the availability of the teachers in our schools and there is a more than uh, the male teacher sorry female teachers male teachers are higher in government schools in private schools, what happens more are female teachers, not the male teachers. In aided schools, uh, more are uh, female, uh, male teachers more than the female teachers. In other schools, it is male teachers. See, totally uh, female teachers are more in comparison to the male teachers. So around 47.490 lakhs of male teachers are there in India. Uh, at the same time, 49 lakhs of 47 uh, point, 49 point, uh, 47 lakhs female teachers are there in India. So now we have the statistics of the teachers. What is the student to teacher ratio in schools in India? See, at present, it shows at the primary schools, the ratio of the teacher is 26.25. In upper primary, it is to 18.86. In secondary, it is 18.44. And in higher secondary, it is 26.27. So this is the statistics available. This is the student-teacher ratio in schools at present in India. Why I am bringing your attention into this particular area? Because there were a, a lot of uh, comments on the transformation of the beard colleges and the closure of a standalone beard colleges. So many were shouting that, see, uh, there are disparity existing between the demand and the supply of the teachers. So whether there is a demand or a supply. See, some many of the educationists to plead that the isolated standalone beard colleges should be closed. Why? Because it produces a big number of teachers we are, are the present system is unable to accommodate this huge number of teachers produced by the beer colleges. Now, let us have a look on the NCTs. See, it is uh, quite interesting and uh, embracing that. I tried to get an actual data of the student teachers studying in India in various uh, courses in various uh, education, teacher education institutions. There is no correct answer from the side of NCT. No person is able to provide the accurate data of the student teachers those who are studying at present in uh, present in india it is really pathetic to see okay whatever it may be see uh, in uh, march 21st from the nct source what i understood uh, approved intake 
in the last year it was 17 lakh 30 um, yes 17 lakhs okay so here we found uh, the existing staff as uh, total uh, say uh, comes around uh, 96 uh, 97 okay and there is no data available regarding the requirement of the teachers every year that is also noticeable okay but when we go through the different uh, uh, sources there is a report from the unesco in 2021 there is a dearth of teachers in india see now you can see from bihar to lakshadweep the teachers number of schools with vacancy is noted in the brown color okay so uh, you can see more uh, teachers are uh, required vacancies are there in madhya pradesh as well as west bengal and uh, maharashtra uh, jharkhand etc etc so all these uh, uh, states are facing dearth of teachers the vacancies are existing around 11 lakh 16,846 in India. So how their claim that is uh, demand and supply do not match. So I would like to conclude that there exist uh, there exist demand for the teachers that I would like to establish through these statistics. See, accepted norms and standards that is given by the government, central government to uh, Supreme Court. The Ministry of Education has referred the norms and standards for which the recommended people uh, uh, teacher ratio, special education uh, teacher, or whatever it may be, inclusive school, whatever it may be, 10 is to 1 at the primary level and 15 is to 1 for the upper primary, secondary and higher secondary level. For our simple calculation, we can take the uh, measurement as ratio of uh, student to pupil uh, 15 is to 1. For 15 students, there should be one teacher that is the plan of the government that is the stand uh, reported by the government in the supreme court okay so similarly unesco report that is uh, uh, 69 percentage of the teachers are working without job account contracts it's a very very uh, frustrating information and we know that many of the teachers are not uh, struggling to uh, exist in the position to earn their uh, daily bread okay so at present uh, there is a 47.1 as i can see 26 is to one the overall uh, school system so while we taking the average 47, 26, so uh, 73, 73, uh, around 36.5. Uh, so at present, there is one teacher for 36.5 students in India. Well, we taking an average of the people ratio of secondary as well as primary schools, this is becomes uh, 35 point. Okay. So how it will be matched? There exists a conflict. Okay. On the basis of this 
statistics. Understanding that. Now we shall go to the teacher education recommendations of NEP. What are the major recommendations given by NEP regarding teacher education? The most important and very valuable recommendation regarding the teachers is inspiration for the best and outstanding students to enter the teaching profession, especially from rural areas. At present, our teacher education system in India very seriously facing the deterioration of the quality of teaching as well as education. In many occasions, uh, I have questioned myself and uh, discussed with my group. In teacher education program, the student teachers are prepared and they are developing the skills to prepare lesson plans, chart, models, instructional materials, etc., etc. But when they are in job, 97.3 percentage are not utilizing these skills that they have developed throughout their teacher education program. Why? There is no documentation at all. There is no further learning. And we know the present system of in-service education, teacher education programs are simply putting sand on the eyes. There is no worthwhile or uh, concrete productive uh, development of the skills among the teachers. So very pathetic situation. The, so the NEP now suggests inspire the best. This is also one of the most crucial issue. The best students are not encouraged to engage in the teaching profession. Why? It's a very crucial issue. So more, the best students are going to either uh, medical or engineering or uh, in such highly uh, motivated professional areas. And those who are uh, unable to catch such areas, they are turning to degree, conventional degrees, and they are joining to teacher education program. Of course, there are exemptions, highly inspired, motivated, uh, with a good, uh, high aptitude towards uh, teaching profession. Many students are joining in teacher education program. This is also a fact. But in comparison to them, the number of the students who are not motivated by the teaching profession are joining in the teacher education. So that's why NEP have given clear cut direction. Best and outstanding students must enter in the teaching profession. And teachers require training in high quality content as well as pedagogy. Of course, it is a fact in present teacher education system, the content and the pedagogy is outdated. While we are comparing to, comparing to the uh, developed nations, our pedagogy and the content is very weak. Okay, so we have to provide high quality content as well as pedagogy. Then teacher education will gradually be moved by 2030 into multidisciplinary colleges and universities as well as aim to house outstanding education departments that offer BATM and PhD degrees in education. So by 2030, 
ടീച്ചർ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ പ്രോഗ്രാംസ് ഷുഡ് ബി ഇൻ മൾട്ടി ഡിസിപ്ലിനറി സെറ്റപ്പ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റീസ് ബിക്കോസ് ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് ആർ ദ ബാക്ക് ബോൺ ഓഫ് ദി ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് ദ നേഷൻ so the quality improvement and all the focus should be on teacher education so outstanding education departments should be established in uh, universities as well as in a multidisciplinary uh, environment and they should provide such education teacher education degrees and by 2030 minimum qualification for the appointment of teachers in schools should be four year integrated bed degree program and there will be two year bed program say the uh, in the previous sessions that i had there was a uh, an uh, conflict not a conflict arguments so that is a two year bed programs are there but you must understand that will be offered by the same multidisciplinarity disciplinary institutions for those who have already obtained bachelor's degrees in other specialized subjects for example what i understood from the discussions with other experts that is this two year abgate program will be provided to the students those who have completed bachelor's degree in other specialized subjects for example a student who has completed his btech degree okay he did his btech degree in either in mechanic or any other engineering whatever it may be after the four years program his mind shifted to teach he wants to join in uh, school as a teacher he developed a passion towards the teaching definitely we should provide an opportunity to him so for them the two year bet program can be offered this is the idea included in this recommendation and one year will be offered those who have completed the equivalent four year multidisciplinary bachelor's degree or who have obtained master's degree in a specialty and they wish to become subject teacher in the specialty see after four year uh, disciplinary multidisciplinary bachelor degree not in teacher education in any see all the conventional programs are uh, three year programs are becoming four year programs okay after the four year program suppose uh, one student has completed uh, uh, four year program in uh, ba honors or in any any other subjects he can opt to one year bed program as well as those who have completed their master degree so actually why these options are provided to attract most efficient students to the teaching profession right multidisciplinary higher education institutions offering four year see here the aspect is this odl open distant learning mode so you know um, in uh, igno igno is uh, providing uh, teacher education program that is uh, on odl similarly such programs can be uh, given in the field of teacher education right then training in time tested and most recent techniques in pedagogy time tested and most recent techniques that should be uh, familiarized to the student teachers and these techniques should be integrated in the pedagogy especially in the foundational literacy numeracy multi level teaching and evaluation teaching uh, with uh, children with disabilities etc etc so here use education technology uh, technology so very important direction use of education technology learner centered 
and the collaborative learning. These three areas are more important to focus. Then strong practicum training in the form of in-classroom teaching at uh, local schools. See, it uh, proposes one year. Now in our two-year program, we are providing six months of training in the schools that will be one year strong practicum in classroom teaching emphasizes the practice of the fundamental duties the, the student teachers must taught and they should be prepared to discharge the knowledge of fundamental duties article 51a of Indian constitution with other constitutional provisions while teaching any subject. So the main issue in our India, the Indian citizens are not aware about our fundamental duties and not aware of our constitution. So the teachers are the carriers of our constitution to the future generation then students must understand the constitutional provisions they must understand the fundamental duties from the different quarters i heard that national education policy is against the constitutional provisions but it is not true national education policy have given concrete direction to include the constitutional provisions in teaching of any subject or any or performing any activity so very very uh, important uh, recommendations made by nep then stand alone institutions should be closed if it is a substantive stringent action we know Whatever we say in favor of the teacher education institutions in India, we know there exist a lot of manipulations, right? There are a, a number of fake teacher education institutions in India. So they, these institutions also providing substandard, see, there, there, are, there is no uh, required infrastructure facilities. There is no teachers even to teach them. So such a substandard institutions should be closed. Then four-year ITP, elementary, secondary education, will substitute the degree plus B.Ed. system or 12th plus TTC in long run. So in future, there will be no degree plus B.E. or 12th plus TTC, teacher education program, all programs will be in the form of a four-year integrated teacher education program, right? Then, why? Everybody may ask, why this four-year uh, uh, system? See, teaching profession is a very noble profession in the universe. A doctor can diagnose and treat a one patient. An engineer can construct one building. But the teachers are constructing an efficient community that can lead the nation to the development where the secularism, where the democracy, everything is protected and for, uh, everybody is a follow the constitu constitutional provision. So considering this fact, highly professionalized teachers are required. That's why like MPBS, like uh, engineering, like uh, legal studies, Teacher education should be professionalized. Then, from semester one onwards, the core subjects, liberal subjects, 
and the educational purpose should be taught. Then the major focus of the recommendation is based on the sustainable development goals developed and uh, recommended by our United Nations. No poverty, there should be zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life under uh, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions, partnerships for the goals. So these are the development, uh, sustainable development goals recommended by United Nations. So this is the major focus of our national education policy. Then, based on all this recommendation, what is the system of education that we have to develop in India? A new system of education. This new system of education should produce a creative potential individual. It's a very key recommendation, creative potential individual. See, creativity is very important. For creativity, that potential, that is a skill. That a skill should be developed in the individual then only he can be a worthy social being and then only he can find a job or a profession and will take up the job for the development of the nation for the development of the community and will produce something for the betterment of the society so such a potential, creative potential individual should be the output of the entire system of education. Right. So for this, what is needed? Holistic development. Holistic development means not only the thinking capacity or uh, any other capacities that is uh, uh, related to our IQ. But it should be not only intelligent quotient, but also the social quotient, emotional quotient, national quotient, universal quotient. So this is a holistic development. So the education should focus on the development of the physics, the mind, the spirit, and his thoughts. That's why in the UGC guidelines, it has stated from the Upanishad, uh, there is a quoting. It was a really uh, relevant. Let the noble thoughts come to our mind. Okay. So such a personality should be developed. Always the person should look around with the positivity, not with the negativity. Such a, such a holistic development is required. So this holistic development will link with the two aspects. One is literacy and numeracy. That is a basic. And the second thing, higher order cognition capacities. Higher order cognition capacities. See, the relevant logic why for that question he should be able to find out the answer as in india in past uh, culture our gurus our sages all were predicting 
based on their logic and the philosophy. So such a higher order cognitive capacity should be developed among the students. In the present situation, what we observe, our generation loves to use the relevant logic. There will be logic, but is the, that is according to their philosophy develop, uh, developed from their surroundings. So instead of that, there should be a deep uh, logical thinking and uh, production of knowledge. See here, this holistic development of the child is not possible only by the interaction of the student and the teacher. This, this should be engaged with the parent. As well as the teacher, parent has a very important role in molding an individual with the holistic development. So communication between teacher, student, parent is very, very, very important. In most of the modern countries, you know, see, parent always communicate with the teacher, teacher always communicate with the parent and what is happening in the home, what is happening in the school, everything is uh, transacted. So equal role, in the present India, what we feel, parent think that, okay, we have to send the child to the school and the teacher is responsible for that. So that we have to change, right? This is uh, the new system of education. The base of uh, this uh, system is, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, the sustainable development goals and the 21st century education that we have envisioned and the traditions and the values of our nation. We have a great uh, tradition and sound values, value system. So our uh, system that we are going to develop in India should be based on uh, tradition and values. See, what should be the holistic? See, for this, what is required? A holistic teacher is required. This holistic teacher, I would like to say guru. See, guru is always connected with the four elements. That is a student. He always connected with the student as well as parent, community, and universe. Then only a holistic teacher can be developed. So these are the directions of the uh, national education policy. Let us now go to go to the UGC guidelines on teacher education. See, it clearly states, conduct cutting and research in various aspects of education. You know, there is no scope for the research in the present teacher education system, especially in the standalone institutions. Why multidisciplinary? You must think, you must understand. There is no scope for cutting edge research in standalone institutions, number one. Second, support the actualization of all teacher education in multidisciplinary institutions and to contribute to multidisciplinary and holistic higher education across discipline. So it is not a multidisciplinarity, not only multidisciplinarity, but interdisciplinarity that is envisioned by the UGC in their guidelines. So present uh, structural arrangement, as we know, there, there is a MA education, PhD, B.Ed, M.Ed uh, programs and uh, uh, standalone education institutions are there. DLED program is uh, uh, undertaken by the TTCs and the colleges of education are undertaking B.Ed program, M.Ed program, etc. And some university departments are conducting uh, other courses like uh, um, guidance and counseling, diploma certificate in uh, education, at physical education, etc. So these are these are present situation we know. Okay. See now. 
sorry okay what the nep says teacher education should give importance to three aspects one pedagogy equal importance should be given to research where in teaching and learning see the teacher is not only a person to teach but he should be a researcher say usually uh, as a uh, as it is mandatory we are teaching action research how many student teachers after the acquaintance with the teaching profession conduct action research no research at all so equal balance to pedagogy as well as research for that we need multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary understanding say not compartmentalization of the education program but it should interdisciplinary as well as multidisciplinary so for example a student of uh, history okay the student who uh, has chosen history subject but that uh, history will lead to anthropology history will lead to civics history will lead to linguistics see the supporting materials for the history anthropology archaeology as well as linguistics these are very important so the history students when he wants to learn about anthropology or archaeology he should have that space multidisciplinary as well as interdisciplinary while he is learning this history he want to learn archaeology or uh, he wants to learn the science of chirology so such uh, subjects should be linked for this purpose what is suggested teaching learning centers should cater such a requirement multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary understanding should be ensured in the teaching learning centers as well as centers of excellence in curriculum pedagogy under the same uh, scheme of pandit madan mohan malavya scheme as well as inter university centers for teacher education iucts under uh, pmmm and mtt caters research and development r and d so continuous research and development as well as in our uh, military or uh, uh, medicine or in uh, engineering there should be continuous research and the research output should be implemented all of a sudden in the field of teacher education as well as education so these are the recommendations then we shall just think what about the stand alone teacher education institution i think you are clear with the accept of multidisciplinarity how that i will explain to you before that what we should understand what will be the future of stand alone teacher education institutions focus 1 all existing stand alone teacher education institutions must aim to become multidisciplinary higher education institutions so there is no existence of all stand alone institutions some of the principals uh, teacher educators and educationists believe that a college which is managing bed m and ttc research mphil etc these are multidisciplinary institutions 
no that is a composite institution so this composite institution cannot survive to survive a beard college or the college with uh, emmet or any other teacher education program should become a multidisciplinary higher education institution okay how i will explain that then preparation of appropriately qualified teachers by ensuring high quality training and exposure to teacher trainees for multidisciplinary education exposure to teacher trainees for multidisciplinary education so the for example after this four year integrated teacher education program in a multidisciplinary environment should be able to teach any subject in the school right or any subject that is allied or related to his specialized subject this is the object teacher education requires multidisciplinary inputs all programs for the initial preparation of professionally trained teachers will be moved to multidisciplinary in a phased manner don't think that the teacher education institutions will be in multidisciplinary mode in uh, today or tomorrow it has provided a time limit up to 2035 so in front of us there is an ample uh, time of uh, around uh, 12 years minimum 10 years are there so gradually the stand alone institutions should be converted into multidisciplinary institution stand alone institutions have led to the intellectual and professional isolation of teacher education and their faculty from the rest of the disciplines it is a very true uh, comment made by the ugc the stand alone institutions are isolated intellectually the institution is and the activities of uh, teacher educators as well uh, student teachers are uh, limited in the walls of that particular college they have no integration or inter uh, connection with the other faculties or uh, students so this is making them isolated okay so uh, this should be changed that's why multidisciplinary then focus to multidisciplinary higher education institutions universities and multidisciplinary colleges must aim at establishing department in education which aside from carrying out teaching and research can also offer four year integrated program in collaboration with other department such as psychology philosophy sociology neuroscience indian languages etc etc that is a direction to the education departments in the uh, higher education institutions what are the structural arrangements suggested by them open education departments in select multidisciplinary universities and colleges for example uh, there are several uh, colleges arts and science colleges so these arts and science colleges can open department of education okay so what will happen the teacher education department and the other departments will have interaction and it will help the student teachers to develop an integrity other universities and colleges may take up in a phased manner of for the purpose other colleges and universities like our stand alone colleges in a phased manner they have to convert themselves into multidisciplinary institutions by starting different programs in their campus so for example a beard college with 50 students of one intake that institution can start programs related to arts and science programs 
history or biology or zoology or malayalam or english or hindi or arabic such programs you have to start in your bed college that is the recommendation existing education department in universities and colleges should be involved in the implementation of nep 2020 so very important direction existing education departments may be upgraded to play a strategic role in the implementation of nep 2020 and the planned departments need to take initiative to supplement the national and the institutional initiatives towards its implementation so the focus is national education policy to successfully implement the recommendations of the national education policy the existing education uh, colleges as well as the departments have to make attempts by conducting research by organizing several programs and uh, um, making collaborative attempt in the educational and the social development uh, with the, the neighboring institutions uh, universities or uh, other uh, social agencies or with the government agencies etc etc this is the direction the existing education department also may do hand holding to guide the new department of education norms and standards followed by ugc should be applicable to this selected institution so very important direction from the discussions with the higher officials what i understood the nct will not be there what is the use actually i don't know say after the establishment of the nct what quality improvement took place in the field of teacher education i would like to say to zero or it is negative and to see the pathetic situation of the nct when i asked the um, accurate data of the existing teacher education institutions and student teacher enrollment they are helpless to provide such data okay whatever it may be so ugc will be the higher authority of all these institutions as our benwari lal said yesterday all these ugc and other apex bodies will be under one umbrella of higher education okay the existing as well as planned education departments may preferably be named as school education education departments will be termed as school of education more stress should be given to linkage for their courses programs to the job market see in western countries we can observe that always all the professions have a clearer engagement with the market job market see the researches are conducted there in the universities for example in teacher education field how uh, the most uh, beautiful or uh, most effective curriculum uh, should be developed or uh, how the uh, most effective teacher education or new model of teacher education program can be implemented how we can uh, attract more students to the particular institution by improving their uh, teaching strategies or uh, adopting uh, other uh, suitable measures so all these are the research uh, areas of uh, universities and uh, colleges of education in the western countries so in a similar way we have to change then uh, functions and uh, programs uh, the time is uh, running out so i will just uh, read out some of the key aspects so here in department of education so what happens actually nct is uh, giving a national curriculum framework then the university board of uh, study and uh, other agencies will uh, sit together and they will uh, develop uh, a curriculum and the curriculum will be implemented and further what happens nothing happens say in 2015 once the curriculum is revised after that 
what a revision took place and even though even there is any reconstruction takes place it did, it never gave room for the new uh, educational quality education aspects it is a, a pathetic condition then education department itself will be multidisciplinary right please please note it this is a little bit confusing uh, this we have to discuss in the uh, conclusion of this session education department itself will be multidisciplinary it will function in tandem with other disciplines contributing further towards multidisciplinarity and uh, interdisciplinarity this we have to uh, clearly should interact and we have to make a frame for this there should be multi units send as a special groups see in uh, education departments uh, see uh, in all other countries we can observe that uh, in uh, education department not only a beard program but there are different uh, uh, areas that is like uh, foundation of education equity and inclusion education leader leadership and governance special needs education etc 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 uh, curriculum development so all these areas are the different uh, um, compartments uh, of education teacher education then existing uh, education departments are uh, supposed to take lead role in the implementation of NEP like uh, resource development training and research okay uh, also it states to provide a uh, start a certificate a diploma degree programs and skill based courses and uh, must to give importance to uh, specialized areas like uh, curriculum and pedagogy education technology counseling yoga shiksha uh, management and leadership etc then uh, also address a range level of starting pre school education up to higher education so uh, also recommend for MOOC, uh, OERs, uh, micro credentials, uh, machine learning, blended learning, etc. Uh, also recommend uh, for uh, promote a team and a network and uh, to uh, generate good practice uh, practices in various uh, areas of educational application. Then infrastructure and human uh, human resource positions uh, should be catered by that particular institution themselves. Okay, so these are the uh, major uh, recommendations. I am not able to uh, explain all other things. It is not much important anyhow. Okay, how now we shall, we have to think over the implementation of NEP twenty twenty. The focus is access, equity, inclusion. So accessibility should be en enhanced, increased throughout the alternative pathways, as well as equity and inclusion. Then importance to Indian knowledge system, tradition, culture, and values. Cur curriculum and pedagogy, especially, that should be constructivist and connectivist pedagogies. The teacher education program should focus on imparting or preparing the student teachers to impart their teaching learning uh, activities using the most modern pedagogies like constructivism and connectivist, uh, connectivist pedagogies. As well as uh, critical pedagogies should be given priority, contextual pedagogies should be given priority in developing the curriculum uh, of uh, learning as well as uh, teaching and in uh, learning resources. This is a, a very important direction. Okay. Then vocational education along with this. See, uh, not only, see, we have only one element of vocational education in the name of uh, SUPW, socially uh, useful productive work. So instead of that, uh, other vocational uh, skills should be developed among uh, student teachers 
then skills on innovative formative and summative assessment both online and offline then digi digital education then quality academic research uh, regulation and uh, quality assurance are the focus of uh, uh, implementation okay now i would like to present the challenges that we are going to face by the implementation of this uh, UGC guidelines. What will happen to the standalone beard colleges? They are going to face economical crisis and shutdown. Now, National Council for Teacher Education invited application for four-year integrated teacher education program in the previous year. NCT has conducted inspection uh, to the uh, applied institutions and they have given letter of intent to start the four-year integrated programs. So gradually, suppose in uh, one of the district of uh, a state, suppose there are uh, uh, 14 or 13 colleges of education. There is one four year integrated program. By running off of four years, the admission to the existing standalone institutions will become reduced. Then what will happen? The teachers should be paid. The management and uh, uh, other uh, stakeholders have to uh, manage funding economical crisis. In the economical crisis, gradually these standalone institutions have to shut down. And the institutional eligibility criteria See, for starting four year integrated teacher education program, we have to shift into multidisciplinary. This is a criteria. Then, teacher education with a multiple program can apply. No. Then, uh, government, state governments has to formulate a fol policies on the basis of this. Regulations, NOC is uh, important. The affiliation of the concerned universities based on the revised norms and policies, higher education policies and the curriculum. All this gradually will lead to closure of Bayard standalone colleges. Apart from that, while the colleges are closed, loss of the job of staff members. See, 80 percentage of the existing teacher educators will lose their job. How? That I will explain later. Then, approval of underqualified staff, absence of voice of management. Managements are not uh, opening their mouth. And uh, staff members, we know they say um, a non united area is the staff members of a teacher education, particularly in the self-financing sector. See, I told you, no, 80% of staff members will lose their job. How? See, this is the ITP, four-year integrated teacher education program, faculty requirement. See, suppose one unit, of 50 students, a beard program, we would like to start as a department in our multidisciplinary environment. That require a head of the department in the rank of the professor or associate professor in education. One is enough. Okay. It's not a principal. So principals will not be there. Principals of colleges of education will be in the past history, right? So one professor is required. He should be equivalent to the um, uh, qualification of the present principal. That is uh, uh, PG plus MED plus PhD plus 10 years experience. 
then assistant professors assistant professors eight uh, assistant professors are uh, uh, eight areas are required that is uh, my uh, either maths physics or chemistry whatever it may be for each subject one uh, teacher is required and two lecturers or assistant professors are required in the education studies only two these two must possess pg with a med plus net plus 55 percentage of mark only two members all other that is one to seven category they only require pg with b ed okay so pg with b ed teachers are eligible to teach in the uh, educational department no need of a med see only two teachers are required that's why i told you 80 percentage of present teacher educators will lose their job and what are the solutions and the remedies in front of us we have to start or continue the dialogues with the experts in the field and keep updated them as well as yourself we have to interact with the experts say for example our uh, tiwari ji who inaugurated our webinar as well as our uh, uh, sandosh panda ji and uh, most of these uh, uh, educationists those who are uh, uh, jointly engaging in uh, formulating the policy we have to interact with them we have to give them an input about the present scenarios the present situations the present uh, conflicts the um, difficulties that we are going to uh, face everything we have to update with them as well as submit a collective suggestion and a recommendation of principals teacher educators and stakeholders to minister of education and ugc this is another uh, way we have to deal with the issue and uh, we pays is going to conduct a national wide survey regarding the implementation of ugc regulation and the conversion of multi uh, disciplinary education uh, institutions on the basis of this we are going to uh, conduct a national wide survey so uh you must do one thing you ask your friends your teacher educators your principals or your any other uh, co-fellers ask them to complete the form this will be a google form ask them to fill and this output we will uh, tabulate and on the basis uh, uh, we can submit the report organize state level and university level awareness programs under the banner of pace join the national grid of principals association to discuss it you be with us because there is only one platform in india to discuss all these issues that is related to teacher education that is pace so you uh, always uh, keep uh, a hand with us then constitute apex bodies to discuss and formulate strategies to solve the issues in your region or in a state and or in under university you just uh, uh, for, uh, construct some bodies and discuss this matter so this is the suggestions that i have to place in front of you and uh, thank you very much for uh, your patient listening thank you thank you very much and uh, i would like to wish you a very very prosperous happy new year and uh, a hard work for the uh, transformation of multidisciplinary institutions thank you thank you very much over to tripta ma'am uh, yes over to dr sushila uh, thank you ma'am uh thank you so much sir uh, really it was very informative uh, in informative and uh, you have touched all the uh, thin lines that uh, 
that's supposed to be clarified and very deep, uh, deep rooted hard work you have done and pointed out all the uh, thin lines, thoroughly explained and thoroughly enlightening and informative session for all the listeners. Really, it was very fruitful and remarkable session. I enthusiastically uh, thank you from depth of my heart from all the uh, on behalf of all the participants and all the PACE members. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir. It was really uh, informative and enlightening also. Now I request uh, Professor B.S. Channa uh, Vaswapa, Treasurer, Karnataka Chapter Phase for the uh, thematic session. Professor okay. B.S. Channa. Okay, madam. Okay, okay. Thank you. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Very well, sir. Sir, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, afternoon, sir. sir. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, audible, sir. Uh, good afternoon, yes, sir. sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, respected uh, President Sir Face India Shilpal Singh Ji and uh, the respected uh, Devan Sir Ji, the Secretary of Face India Association of India and Sarjit Kaur, the Executive Member of Face India and Dr. Drishatra Chauhan, President of Madhya Pradesh and all the participants and dignitaries. I must thank you, the organizing team, the member of Face India and office bearers I'm working hard for the last four days to make uh, this webinar successful. I congratulate to all, once again, all the principals, participants, and dignitaries, and our great Dean Jack Venkateshers, and all others. So, <clears throat> now, uh, last four days, we are uh, very motivated and to watch uh, how to uh, be a single alone beard college uh, transparency stay. Uh, multidisciplinary acts. Now, ETA is one of the largest system of teacher educations in the world. Beside the university departments of education and their official affiliated colleges, government and government headed institutions, private and self financing colleges, and open universities are also engaged in teacher educations. The most, the most teacher education programs are nearly identical at their standard wise across the university institutions and universities. Every country developed the system of education to express and promote a unique social and cultural identify. They also meet the challenges time to time. The teacher education is based on the theory, but teachers are made not born in country to the assumption teachers are born not made since teaching is considered an art and science the teacher has to acquire not only knowledge but also the skill that are called as make a trade teachers serve education which is an effective instrument of man making the teacher learn this art through pre-service teacher education program. A week programs of teacher educations cannot serve the purpose. It is with the objectives of rising the professional status of teachers developing among them great commitment to the society, their students and their professions increasing their professional competencies and performance, the skill and empowering them. When the teacher acquire more and more qualities and the skills, he definitely our nations are continuing developing more and more. Once again, thank you all, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor B.S. Chanavaspa. Now I request Dr. Tripta Parmar and Dr. Sarabjit Kaur to take over the session. Uh, it's time for Dr. Sarabjit, ma'am, to take over for discussions. Over to Dr. Sarabjit Kaur. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Sushila. Thank you, Dr. Tripta ji. Uh, thematic session mm. was excellent. I congratulate Dr. Devanandan KVG for providing such an elaborative presentation before us. 
how to convert the standalone institutions into the multidisciplinary institutions and what are the requirements of NAP 2020 and how to equip yourself for your own survival and existence. So now it's time for a discussion on this uh, UGC guidelines on transforming beard colleges into multidisciplinary institutions. Before we begin, I would like to go over a few ground rules to ensure that we have a productive and respectful conversation. Uh, please be mindful of time and stay on topic. We want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to contribute. Please uh, respect the opinions of others. We may not all agree, but we can still have a productive conversation by listening to each other and trying to understand different perspectives. Uh, please refrain from uh, interrupting or talking over other. We want to create a safe and inclusive space for everyone uh, to share their thoughts. So if you have any question or comment, please uh, raise your hand or use the uh, chat function to indicate that uh, you would like to speak. So uh, we all are now excited to hear thought, uh, your thoughts and let's have the discussion. So. Uh, I must start that uh, teaching is not everybody's cup of tea. So uh, various queries I have received from various participants, but I would like to request the participants to ask the uh, questions from our uh, resource persons who are in front of us and get your uh, doubts cleared, please, by one, one by one. Yeah, Ruby, uh, Ruby uh, wishes, if I'm not wrong, that uh, she has raised the hand. Yeah, proceed, please. Uh, we will take up first question from Ruby Vishisht. Over to Ruby. Uh, uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Okay. Uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, I thank you very much, uh, Devanandan sir, for such an insightful session. Uh, my question is that our institution has different departments, like we have BEAD and ETT running in the education department. Along with that, we are also running law department, pharmacy department, management department, we have nursing, and we have associate college. That is not a degree college, but it is associated college. Can we be the multidisciplinary institution? No doubt, a big yes for that. Okay, sir. Uh, any other uh, course that we can add or but these courses departments are from different universities this is like university of ptu then baba free university in punjab this is uh, in the punjab then guru nanak dev university uh, how we can collaborate all these departments into one okay clearly uh, yesterday our uh, notia ji has uh, given a clear cut uh, idea on this that's why i did not explain uh, much okay. on that see right. uh, there are uh, different ways to uh, make uh, one uh, standalone college uh, multidisciplinary uh, one is that you have you can start uh, other uh, subjects uh, or other courses, uh, either in arts and science or legal studies or whatever it may be. And if uh, you, uh, your college is associated with uh, uh, other college who is uh, providing uh, uh, programs in legal studies or in nursing or whatever it may be, it also will be treated as a multidisciplinary institution. And the third one, uh, that uh, in uh, neighboring one uh, teacher education, sorry, one uh, arts and science college or a multidisciplinary institution is there, you can establish an MOU with that institution and you can collaborate with them. Then you will be treated as a multidisciplinary education institution. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. The next question we are having from Lakshmi Chopra. Uh, I request Madam Lakshmi Chopra to put her question. Good, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, firstly, I would like to say, sir, your uh, session was really very good and very informative. Thank you so much. And uh, from your uh, session, one thing I came to know that, that uh, in future, there will be only two teachers required who must have done the MED. And rest, uh, even with the post-graduation and having only BA degree, they can work as an assistant professor. 
Yes. Sir, my question is this: Then what will be the future of B.Ed. M.Ed. integrated courses like, and what will be the future of M.Ed. Then? Okay. Say so there is a, a direction from them that is there will be M.Ed. B.Ed. integrated program or M.Ed. Uh, research integrated program. See, M.Ed. Uh, see, only uh, a very limited number of uh, teachers are required with M.Ed. So they are not giving much importance to M.Ed program. So instead of that, they are um, giving more importance to M.Ed uh, research integrated program. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lakshmi. Anyone else who wants to ask something? Yeah, yesterday I uh, received a query from a uh, teacher from Education College. She was saying that ours is a, a self-financed standalone college, but they have a degree college that is an aided college. Can merger be done, sir? Of course, no doubt. See, whether it is self-financing or aided or government mm -hmm. college. Suppose uh, your beard standalone college is uh, existing. <laughs> nearby an aided institution where the other uh, uh, multi uh, courses are uh, conducted you can collaborate with them and if the government college is willing uh, to collaborate put a moi with them or else uh, your uh, if your college is nearby the uh, university department of education you interact with the university and put an MOU, collaborate with them, then you will be a multidisciplinary institution. See, what UGC says, there is no barriers. No barriers. Maximum liquidate and the maximum democracy to ensure quality teacher education. The output should be quality teacher education. No isolated standalone institutions, but integrated, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary uh, uh, teachers should be developed. That is the focus. Okay. Fine, sir. Uh, do we have some standard format of MOU that need to be signed within the institutions? So far, it is not a prepared. See, uh, now this uh, policy uh, guidelines uh, is uh, published. Uh, all these are under work in the workshop, the curriculum framework, then uh, MOU, and uh, all other implementation strategies are being published. Yeah, Dr. Dinda, would you like to ask something? Sir, good afternoon, good afternoon. sir. I'm Dr. Nagaraj. Please, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, actually, our college is also a standalone college, sir. Uh, we have DEd, but uh, no, uh, now the students are not admitted for DEd. Uh, BPed we have, and BEd also we have, sir. So can we have MOU with other? Actually, our next to never uh, we have a one government college, sir. Can we go with MOU with uh, that college, sir? Is it possible? See. From the side of the UGC, there is no restriction in uh, establishing MOU with the, any institution. See, the only requirement is this. If the institution, multidisciplinary institution that existing in your neighborhood is willing or not, that's only the thing, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, but government, uh, maybe they are not able, I think, sir. See, yes. uh, there is there is an ortho uh, a traditional belief uh, so that's why that is a superstition exists that is uh, government institutions never should touch the self-financing institution self-financing uh, institution never should touch the government institution there exists an apartheid okay so okay. so <laughs> this should be liquidated this should be liquidated. There should be no such a discrimination between uh, uh, aided government, self-financing. Everything should, every institution should be united together for producing the best teachers. This is the objective. Thank you. Thanks. 
Sir, good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, may, may audible, sir? Yes, Venkata, sir, please, sir. Yeah. Sir, you gave an excellent session. All four days uh, consolidated report you submitted through this webinar, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, many of for asking that stand alone, stand alone, stand alone. As per my knowledge, the last four days, my experience, sir, in future, you definitely we remove that stand alone because all are telling, you are also telling multidisciplinary, the stand alone colleges has, has changed to the multidisciplinary. So our Nagaras are also asking that question. So our college is a stand alone. So no need to worry about this stand alone, sir. They are also started the some departments, some other departments, definitely they solve that problem through that multidisciplinary. Sir. That is the main thing. So now we are, we are, taking, we are thinking about the standalone, standalone. I think uh, my experience last four days, all experts, what they narrated, that uh, every everybody can start all departments. So our B8 colleges also standalone, B8 colleges also, definitely there will be start their own departments, other departments too in their college, they merge with them to our colleges. Dr. Venkatesha K. Now we will take up the question from Dr. Amit Singh Sani. Dr. Amit Singh Sani, please. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir, yes, you are audible. Yes. Uh, ma'am, my question is ki standalone colleges jo hai, unko multi uh, disciplinary mit convert karne ke liye jo bhi procedure chal raha hoga in future to mou ke bare mein baat ho rahi thi to main ye janna chahta hu ki jo mou hai jo nearby kisi bhi college ki institution ke sath kar sakte hain to kya aisa bhi ho sakta hai ki uh, same do uh, ik, bhi, college jo hai wo ikatthe kisi ek degree college ke sath mou kar sakte hain अच्छा अच्छे सवाल हैं इसमें ये बताना चाहता हूं कि बीएड कॉलेज बीएड कॉलेज अलग है स्टैंड अलोन है उसमें एक ही डिसिप्लिन दे रहे हैं सिर्फ टीचर एजुकेशन मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी का अर्थ ये होता है आपकी स्टैंड अलोन बीएड कॉलेज में अन्य सब्जेक्ट और भी पढ़ाना है जैसे uh, Hindi degree program or uh, science degree program or uh, commerce degree program. Such programs or is uh, teacher education program ke saath saath padana hai. Then, the, then can, the, there can the, be... Yes. I'm, interrupting, I'm interrupting. The question is, can two colleges sign MOU with one degree college? Is it feasible? Or it should be one to one. Uh, yes, at present, yes, at, at present, at present, there is no such a direction from the UGC guidelines. Anyhow, we will put up this matter. Anyhow, uh, keep uh, will keep with us because we are going to submit the uh, report, an exhaustive report of our webinar as well as the uh, survey report to the government. We will highlight this matter. Okay, sir. Because uh, hello. Yes, yes, sir. Sir, sir, ये होगा क्योंकि जिस जिस तरीके से colleges की mushrooming हुई थी, तो मुझे लगता है कि MOU में भी इसी तरीके का कुछ होगा अगर ऐसा देखने में आया कि एक degree college के साथ दो या तीन colleges इकट्ठे जो है MOU कर लें। हम्म 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 हम्म। शायद हो सकता है। शायद हो सकता है। हाँ, जरूर, जरूर हो सकता है। देखेंगे हाँ, देखेंगे हाँ, हम तो हमारी जो apex bodies ह we are not going to fight with them. We are not against mm -hmm. them. We are standing for the quality of our education and teacher education. So we are always supporting the apex bodies. We will intimate them. These things will help happen. See, uh, a lot of malpractices are there. Uh, mm -hmm. Always uh, we stood for, against these malpractices. And that, that uh, slightly it resulted in our NCT also. Okay. Uh, so uh, it will happen anyhow. We will support the uh, apex bodies. And now I would like to um, answer uh, an interesting question uh, from the side of uh, Amarnath Mishra. It's a very, very 
uh, important thing. Uh, it's a very genuine uh, thing that he have posted. I have such a uh, such a, no such a question, but uh, I thought merely forming multidisciplinary institutions will not serve the need. But teachers should inculcate multidisciplinary approach in their teaching style. They should give illustration and examples in the class crossing the boundaries of disciplines. Only then multidisciplinary shift is possible. See, uh, this is uh, from the side of Amarnath Mishraji. Amarnath Mishraji, this is the focus of our NEP and uh, um, this UGC guidelines. Multidisciplinary aspect is evolved to make the teacher multidisciplinary. See, the, for example, I would like to say this thing. A teacher, what to do in the present era? The teacher goes to the classroom, takes the textbook and uh, reads it out and it explains or uh, sometimes uh, very uh, in very rare occasion, the teacher takes the students to the laboratory or to the outside of the classroom in the Bagija. That happens, that's all. But instead of that, the teacher uses different methods, strategies for teaching. For example, you just imagine that a student who is sitting in front of one teacher from the morning to evening, what will be the mental state of the student? Even think of that, if I am continuously speaking to you in all the webinars, what will happen? After the two days, nobody will be there as participant, isn't it? Because the man always in front of variety. So the students also want variety. So one class, what you have uh, followed a method or, method or strategy or the materials that you use should be different in the next class. So uh, in this way, multi approaches, multi strategies, multi methodologies. That's why not only constructivism, but even behaviorism should be uh, adopted in certain context. Connectivism, collaborative uh, teaching learning, cooperative teaching learning, project method, blended uh, uh, teaching learning. All this should be mixed to make the teacher multifaceted in his learning teaching process. So this is the aspect behind the all uh, NEP as well as uh, the present policy guidelines. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, Madam Malhotra has raised the hand. Madam Malhotra, would you like to ask something? No, ma'am. I have already uh, questioned my, but okay. one question is there, ma'am. If you permit me, uh, one one more question. May I, ma'am? Yeah, no, please, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Um, sir, as it was discussed in the sessions, also. Uh, in entrance, we conduct the BA entrance test, right? And it takes more than four months uh, for its completion. And in the end, what we observe that even the person who has scored zero, that person is also getting the seat. It's my humble request to the higher authorities kindly do something to stop this kind of entrance test conduction. It only wastes the time, sir. Okay. See, there is a very, very fruitful practical direction from the national education policy. All must understand that. That is academic bank of credit system. See, in the coming future, recent future, what is going to happen? There will be no markets. There will be no uh, a degree certificates with uh, a market so that is a carrying a student scored um, uh, 99 out of 100 in uh, contemporary education. So in such a, uh, such a way, there is no such thing. But instead, the evaluation system is going to be changed in the most modern way using the rubrics. The child, the student teacher will be evaluated from the right beginning of the course. And it will be accumulated. See, he will be tested uh, in uh, his personality, 
his uh, teaching skills, uh, his evaluation skills, for all these uh, different uh, rubrics and uh, tools will be developed. And on the basis of that, whatever scores he scoring or she is scoring in each segment will be uh, put in the digital format. And it, it should be published by the uh, college in their uh, website. So what happens when the student goes out to any other program, instead of that his marks in the examination, his skills which assessed in different segments and uh, form of a score is available. That will be calculated. I think you got the point. So not the aptitude test or entrance test, but the output is important. Right to education says that we never should deny the opportunity for education anybody in this the world even. Okay. So uh, instead of uh, giving an attitude or an uh, entrance test, let them learn. And while he learn, it is assessed in uh, frequent segments and uh, cumulatively it will be recorded. This academic credit of bank will be there. And on the basis, see when after the teacher education program, the student uh, is entering into teaching profession, what they will check? his academic uh, credit bank score, say like our civil score, you may be very familiar with a civil score in banking system. In such a way, his credit score will be there. Then when he is going for further uh, program and he is developing his skills more, that will be added again, cumulatively. So this system is going to be implemented now. Okay, sir. Actually, sir, uh, one more thing I would like to add in this. It's really a very good practice, which uh, you are saying that we will apply. But what as personally teacher, I feel that the teacher does not know how to mark the reflects. And for that, I would suggest ki some in-service program should be held so that it should be marked in the right way. Actually, what we observe, even in an internal assessment, the power is given to the teachers, but they are not using it in an appropriate way. Might be they are not aware how to use it or might uh, the intentions are not so Bonafide. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, so one hello. came to my mind during your conversation with Madam Malhotra. Uh, participants, please mute your mics. Uh, so as you have said, that techniques and tools will be developed to uh, ensure the academic credit score of uh, students. So that tools must be there since we have started ITAP and selected universities. That means that uh, those have already been made. Devanandan sir, I am audible. Yeah, now you are audible, ma'am. Please. Uh, so should should I repeat what I said earlier? Yeah, please, please. So, uh, one question came to my mind during your conversation with Madam Malhotra. That as you're saying that some techniques will be developed to uh, ensure the academic credit score of students. So those tools must be there as we have started ITEP program in selected universities last year only. See, all these things are under construction. Workshops are going on. Several workshops are conducted under different agencies. NCRT also has taken. See, before that, NCTE and uh, UGC also conducted a survey nationwide, uh, inviting the suggestions of the teachers, teacher educators, etc., etc. And uh, do you remember that uh, our PACE also was giving uh, priority uh, for uh, uh, giving input uh, uh, in uh, making a good evaluation system uh, for education. Do you remember that? So that data is there. They are developing uh, tools uh, based on that. See, it is, it is, uh, it is uh -huh. noted that, yes, it is noted that Many of our teacher educators did not respond to that questionnaire. That is very bad, I felt. Sir, uh, one question from my side. Um, uh, that uh, See, the 
uh, when we are supposed to merge with the uh, other colleges, see, um, every college has their own financial policies when they work independently. Uh, then, you know, they. I think they will face a number of financial problems. So how we can, you know, sort out those problems because every college has their own method of payments, cash waiver patterns and arrangement with financial institutions. So, you know, is there any no, guideline no. regarding this? <laughs> no, no, any guidelines so far formulated by the government. See, who will think about the uh, labor class? I would like to say now labor class in the self-financing sector. <laughs> Nobody take care of us. Yes. Right? Hey, you know, I see, uh, uh, two months back, when I had an interaction with the principal, even in Kerala, uh, I just asked him how much you are uh, getting uh, as a salary from your dear uh, college. He told me it is 13,000. Mm -hmm. 13,000. Listen, please don't tell outside because it is a blame for the principal community. <laughs> see, <laughs> more than this, you can see in remote areas of Andhra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, etc. There are stationary principals. You know, uh, they are about stationary principals. They, they are qualified fellows. They can sit in a, uh, their home. Then one-time payment of 50,000 or uh, 30,000 will be paid. And whenever the management <laughs> asks them to uh, put signature, they have to put signature. This is the situation. Thank you, not sure. One more thing, sir. Yes, sir. Even then, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, yesterday that our own resource person, one of the is uh, discussing about GDP 6%. Uh, they fixed for that education purpose, uh, NEP purpose also they fixed. Uh, my request, my concern also, please uh, take care of you, sir, that uh, GDP, if, uh, any possibilities to provide that uh, fund to all over India, B.Ed colleges, if any possible is there. Please take care of that. You will uh, add that to, to our uh, report also, sir. Please. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. We will do, sir. Uh, hello, uh, sir. This is Dr. Tripta Parmar. Uh, sir, we have been discussing uh, uh, the guidelines for the last five days. So one thing has come out of the discussion that uh, there is a very disparity between demand and supply. Uh, there is less demand for the teacher uh, teachers and we are producing more teachers in the society uh, we require only 3 lakh students per year uh, 3 lakh teachers but we are educating 18 lakh so one disparity is there if we see on the other side there is disparity in the income of the teachers working in private schools in and government schools same qualified person, one person is getting 10,000, 8,000, 15,000, other is getting 50,000, 60, 80, so like that. If this disparity can be removed in some method, can we make the private schools who are earning lakhs and crores of benefits that they should make the teachers also the sharer of that benefit in private schools? Then uh, we will uh, the disparity between demand and supply will be diminished because we will be counting that the private the student who is getting job in private school he is also employed. See, uh, we never can ignore the self-financing sector in India or in any nation of the world because they are contributing a lot. Now the corporates are entering into the education field. See, if you go to the developed nations. See, in every federal state, they are constituting a body and uh, um, they are uh, framing the rules and the regulations under which the self-financing or public institutions should, should work. They are providing um, some aids, that's all. So in such a situation, we can also go through uh, such a practice and can be implemented here. 
so uh, in uh, developed nations it is other important uh, concern about the salary the higher salary is given to the elementary teachers and the higher qualifications are required for the uh, elementary teachers do you know that not in a um, university yes, yeah so uh, teachers are paid uh, high and uh, most but at the same time see here how much time a teacher is invested for her or his teaching in a school zero because one year she will uh, struggle with her textbook and uh, student and she will be conditioned and the similar practices will be followed no uh, any um, innovative practice nothing is uh, fresh okay the same route that train will run but in other countries what is happening 24 hours is not sufficient for preparing for one class this is a fact so here there is no preparation so this should be changed anyhow so uh, we can expect that uh, there will be a uh, see in nep it has clearly said the status of the teachers should be regained so status not only means in the social status but also in the status of the financial sector you can expect that okay thank you madam and see in between that i would like to mention one more thing when we discussed about the demand and supply see don't think that the beard only will contribute to teachers but more than that see the educated most of the student teachers are coming from female sector mothers future mothers see there is a very very big impact in the society in uh, molding the future citizens the mothers those who are uh, taken beard taking care of the education of their children and helping their children to become highly educated and supporting the students to become uh, number one uh, in their education. This is social phenomena we never can ignore. It's a, it has a very great impact in our social system. Okay, ma'am. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. I think we can conclude it is four o'clock, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. But I have a little bit small questions for you, sir. Since we are talking about access and equity, so uh, what would be number of seats in ITEP, sir? In one unit, 50 students. That is the NCTC direction now. Then how yes. we can increase gross enrollment ratio in higher education? We that have to... Happen. see. Uh, we have to support and we have to give input uh, to our uh, apex body. Still, we need to question, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And one side, we are saying that we are enhancing quality. And on the other side, we are reducing the number of teachers in teacher training departments. We are appointing just one HOD and two teacher educators to educate, the to train the teacher trainees. How quality can be increased by reducing quantity of teacher educators? This is a very big question. We are starting from the right beginning of the directions or recommendations of ITP from the NCT. Our place One more has... question, ah. sir. One more question. Since we are uh, talking about attracting the best minds to our uh, teacher, uh, teacher uh, training programs, uh, do we know the reality behind the best minds who are there in medical sector or in engineering sector? Of course. How, how do they become best minds? Schools don't use. Yeah, see, our education system is dealing in such a way. Say, the parents who have some money in their hands, they are sending their children for uh, preparation of the entrance examination like need, right? See, of course, uh, there may be compromise in the quality, but even though 
while they are in that uh, profession, medical profession, they, uh, they are compelled to learn to become a doctor. And they uh, develop a social commitment as a doctor. So that, this happens in such a way, our uh, teacher education system, when uh, shifted into uh, four-year uh, professional program, uh, this outcome is uh, expected. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. How could that be expected with a meager contract salary of rupees 10,000 to a uh, uh, SDM? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Of course. If, if, if is... we, need, we need to keep in mind both the realities, the practical realities and the theoretical realities because we need to awaken the policy makers. Basically, yeah. we need to have some courses for the policy makers. We need to have some eligibility criteria for the policy makers who don't know the ground realities. They are just graduates and go to the post and try to implement those heaven things to the ground. So, uh, ma'am, I, ma I, I would like to interfere. Of course, these are all the arguments sustained, but at the same time, in the month of March 2022, the draft of the uh, present uh, policy regulation was published. See, the UGC invited suggestions. Uh, sir, sir, we sent, yeah. we sent lot many suggestions. They were dumped, not, no email even received as a confirmation from their side. We sent a lot of representations. This is the actual situation and we need to accept and we need to challenge also and we need to question also. Of course. To change the scenario. That is the yeah, need we, we have to question. We have to correct them. That is our responsibility as an association. Right? Yeah, being an That's yes why... man doesn't, doesn't solve the issue, sir. Being an yes man doesn't solve the issue. Yeah. We, 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 we have to make them correct the uh, uh, directions while implementing. For that, if, uh, yesterday I told you, we have to stand together. We have to make a huge noise. See, uh, now we have more than 1,000 members uh, uh, along with the page. We together have to discuss. We have to approach the government. We have to approach the member of parliaments again. Then we have to raise our voice in the parliament. And also it through the parliament uh, must reach the UGC. Then only they will be ready to look into this matter and will be ready to make some amendments. Yeah, definitely, sir. Thank you so much, sir. But it's my request that kindly prepare uh, to show the other side of the multidisciplinary also. Because yeah. we have very rigorous training like army training in our institutions. They are not substandard institutions. And substandard can be closed and we can also be challenged if we have any lacunas in our system. Quality can be checked, but uh, kindly in the name of that, all uh, must not be shot out or fired. So, so here, thank you. Here, here, here comes the comment of Pradeep Kumar Misraji. Yeah. Say our weird college itself a multidisciplinary institution. Definitely. So we are going to plead with this uh, particular th things and see we will fight uh, to uh, uh, get our rights. And if not possible with the government, we should be ready to fight in even court. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Sir, 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 namaste. Another one, my main question. In my... our five days national level webinar series, I'm grateful yeah. to have yeah. the opportunity to convene this event and bring together such a diverse and knowledgeable group of attendees. I would like to express my appreciation to all the speakers of various sessions who have shared their insights and expertise with us and their contribution have greatly enhanced the quality of our discussion and have provided valuable learning opportunities for all of us. I would also like to thank you, our technical team under the guidance of Dr. Devanandan KV for their hard work in ensuring that webinar ran smoothly. Their efforts have allowed us to connect and engage with one another seamlessly regardless of our physical locations. 
Thank you again to everyone who have participated in and contributed to this webinar. My heartfelt gratitude towards Space National Executive Committee members, especially Professor uh, Shivpal Singh Ji, President Pace, Professor Devanandan KV, General Secretary Pace, Dr. Darshat Singh Chauhan, Treasurer, Dr. Megha Gulwani, Vice President of Pace, Dr. Ganga Dharsar, and Dr. Aroke Swami for trusting me and providing me this opportunity to uh, convene this webinar. It has been a pleasure to convene this webinar and I hope that all of you have gained a valuable insight and knowledge. Well, hope to see you again in some other webinar. Thank you. And over to Dr. Tripta ji and Dr. Sushila ji. Thank you. Over to Dr. Sushila for further proceedings. Now I invite Dr. Dashrat Singh Chauhan, President Pace, Madhya Pradesh chapter, uh, to present the vote of thanks. Over to Dr. Dashrat Singh Chauhan. I think uh, Dashrat Singh, uh, sir, uh, has not joined. Sir, then uh, I think so. The uh, vote of thanks is in some way is presented by Dr. Sarbjit Kaur. She has already okay. done almost yeah. that. Yeah, so, yeah, really. So uh, now, now I request Dr. Devanandan, uh, National Secretary uh, for the National Anthem, over to Dr. Devanandan Keviji. I request everyone to stand up in honor of National Anthem. Sir, it's not audible. I think voice is muted, I think. Thank you, everyone, for being the part of this intellectual journey. Thank you, everyone. Thank okay, you thank you. Much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ma'am, please link. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Devan and Sushi, sir. The link will be put Shukran, in the sir. WhatsApp Venkesh, group. Because no, no, but the feedback link has already been shared in the chat box. Okay, Again, okay, ma'am, now we are before, Kindly before leaving, fill that form. Ma'am, uh, you post it again. Thanks, so thanks ma'am. Maybe it is. Sushila, ma'am, thanks, thanks. Thanks from KPFM College of Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, so thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It was really nice to be. Uh, with you. Ma'am, can you post the feedback link again? Ma'am, there is no link here, ma'am, for feedback. Okay, please uh, may repost, ma'am. It will be helpful for them. Maybe it is lost in too many messages, no? Yeah, yeah, that's why. Okay. That, that's why. Okay, see participants, I would like to uh, remind you one thing. Uh, your certificates will reach you after one week. Okay, please give time till that. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. The feedback link has been shared. Participants may fill. All right, right. Is it hard copies you are sending to colleges, sir? Certificates? It would be soft copy, sir. It would be e certificate. And anyhow, it is a, a very beautiful end of our uh, uh, this one.